This video is sponsored by Nobody. Hey what's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Super Gaming Minute, the channel dedicated to all things Nintendo and gaming. Alright here we are, episode 2 of our 3 part series of Pokemon facts in celebration of the franchise's 25th anniversary. We will be going over Pokemon Gold and Silver this time, which is considered to be the definitive version to a lot of people in the Pokemon community. I remember my first time playing through the Johto region, catching all the new Pokemon and once again feeling lost, not knowing how to counterattack the new types of Pokemon. Getting my mind absolutely blown when I found out that you could play through both Johto and Kanto regions, a mechanic that they never bothered to bring back in newer incarnations of the series. There are some pretty cool facts on this list you guys, so I'm excited to get into it with you. Don't forget to give the video a like, it really helps out the channel, and of course, don't forget to comment down below any facts that you weren't aware of and learn through this video, or if there are any facts that I should have included but didn't. And of course, the most important thing you can do to help the channel grow would be to subscribe if you like talking all things Nintendo and gaming. And with that said, here are 10 things you didn't know about Pokemon Gold and Pokemon Silver. Here's a crazy fact right out of the gate. Video games, much like other forms of media and entertainment, start out with rough drafts, with the names of people, towns, and creatures being changed before the final drafts are made. As an example, Gyarados was initially named Skullkraken before they eventually changed it. Now there are multiple reasons why a name change can happen. For this fact, I'm sure you can figure out why. In the early draft of the game, the starting city that will eventually be called New Barktown started off with the more eerie name of Silent Hills. Yeah. Seriously. Now obviously this was changed to avoid comparison to the PlayStation franchise Silent Hill, which was released in 1999, a year prior to Pokemon Gold and Silver. In Generation 1 of Pokemon, it's clear that the overall battle mechanic is flawed, which is fine. This was the first game in the franchise and considering all the different types and possible matchups, things definitely can be overlooked, such as Psychic type being relatively unmatched. In the main game, Psychic Pokemon are without a doubt the strongest type in the game, having only one weakness, that being Bug-type Pokemon, which are arguably the weakest type in the whole game. I mean, yes, there are strong Bug-type Pokemon in the first generation. You have Scyther and Pinsir, and I would argue Butterfree, but I've kind of grown to love that stupid butterfly, whether he's strong or not, thanks to the animated series. Like, why? Why did Ash set Butterfree free? God, that killed me as a kid. But Pinsir and Scyther are definitely harder Pokemon to obtain in the game, which makes it even more unbalanced. Which is why in Generation 2, the developers introduced two new types of Pokemon, that being Steel-type and Dark-type. Steel-type Pokemon only take half damage from Psychic-type attacks, and Dark-type Pokemon do double damage to Psychic-type Pokemon. These new additions not only level the playing field, but also open the door to the Pokemon company adding new types of Pokemon in future games. Adding more to the lore of dark type Pokemon, it seems as though the Pokemon company had a much more extreme interpretation of what would eventually become the dark type Pokemon. In Japanese, the term for dark type is actually closer to evil type, meaning that, at first anyway, they weren't meant to represent the night or the shadow, they were literally the embodiment of sinister intentions and underhanded battle strategies. Of course though, later generations would embrace the dark type classification to give it a more diverse and nuanced interpretation. Your arrival in this game, Silver, is kind of a jerk when the game first starts. But unlike Gary from Gen 1 and Gen 2, he doesn't remain a jerk. The developers did a great job in adding several hints in the game as you progress in your journey that prove this point. Other than Silver's overall demeanor, you can tell just how much Silver has grown to love and care for his Pokemon rather than just seeing them as tools to get what he wants in life. 
This is shown in your last battle with Silver. His Golbat has evolved into a Crobat. For those of you who don't know, Golbat may only evolve into a Crobat when he has a very high friendship stat. This change in Silver is further shown in Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver, where we see Silver's Pokemon following him around much like the player's Pokemon. Apparently, us in the West are too fragile and sheltered to get a lot of the same game sprites as the Japanese versions of Pokemon Gold and Silver. When the games made their way to us here in the West, they had to go through additional censorship, which can see a lot of the original content changed or scrapped. For example, the Beauty, the Sage, the Medium, the Swimmer, and the Fisherman all had to go through changes before the game was released to us softies here in the West. Apparently, these sprites were too adult for children in the West. Changing things like smoking, short skirts, religious symbols, and even a girl winking for some reason were deemed offensive. Shiny Locked a term used in the Pokemon community that describes a Pokemon, usually a legendary or mythical, that has no chance of being shiny, although there is a shiny variant in the code. For example, Mew is a Pokemon that is only obtainable in the first generation of Pokemon games. Shiny Pokemon weren't introduced until the second generation of games. No, every single Pokemon model was given a shiny variant in Pokemon Gold and Silver, even the mythical Pokemon Mew, although there is literally no way to obtain a shiny Mew. Now because Mew can only be obtained by transferring it from the first gen games, which again, do not have shiny variant Pokemon, to Pokemon Gold and Silver, it will forever be a non-shiny, even though the code for this shiny variant is in the game. We have to mention at least one glitch when we talk about early Pokemon games, right? So why not this one? Nintendo and Pokemon added character customization without even knowing it. Did you know that you can change the color of your trainer? It takes a few steps to pull it off, but here's how you do it. Start the game as you normally would and choose either a boy or a girl and then start a new game as the opposite gender than what you chose the first time. Afterwards, save the game but shut the game off as it tells you it's saving. When you restart your game, your character should be the wrong color. This glitch also unlocks a mystery gift. Just like every other RPG in the world, Pokemon gives you the ability to decide your character's name. And other than being able to name your rival, that's basically as many different names that you are in charge of. Most other RPGs allow you to name almost everyone within the world. Pokemon never embraced this side of the RPG, which some would argue definitely limits you and doesn't give you the same immersible feel and gameplay as other RPGs. Now, Pokemon was never going to let you name all of the characters that you interact with, like the professors and other key NPCs within the game, other than the actual Pokemon you catch, that is. But during the development phase, the Pokemon company were planning on letting you name your mother in the game. Now, this was obviously left out of the final product, most likely due to space constraints, which is usually the case for games of this time period. Fifteen hundred years prior to the events of Pokemon Gold and Pokemon Silver, the region of Johto first began construction being built by an ancient civilization. This civilization are the ones who built what would be called the Ruins of Alf. This civilization shared a very strong connection with the unknown that lived there. Upon communicating with the unknown, they even based the alphabet on this Pokemon. As time went on, this group would eventually meet up with another group of people who would become the original settlers of the Johto region. These other group of people are the people who originally had come from the Sinnoh region, which we all know is where the Pokemon Diamond and Pearl games take place. The Sinnoh region being where the new Pokemon title Pokemon Legends Arceus takes place. Here's hoping that the next installment of Legends series is based on the Johto region, and go in depth of the early civilization. Okay, so we probably already knew this fact, right? Well, if you didn't know, Pokemon Gold and Silver were to be the last Pokemon games in the series. Quoting Satoru Iwata, No one expected this series to get as big as it did. I didn't intend to make any more Pokemon titles. I even thought that once we entered the 21st century, it would be time for me to do something else entirely. Luckily, that wasn't the case, as Pokemon went on to be the most valuable and most recognized pop culture franchise in the world. And 25 years later, we're still getting new releases of the series, even though some of the last titles arguably aren't the Pokemon Company's best work.
All right, guys, and that is it. That is my list of top Pokemon Gold and Silver facts. Are there any facts on this list that you guys didn't know? Or are there any facts that should have made it onto this list? Sound off in the comments section down below. Don't forget to give this video a like if you learned something new about Pokemon Gold and Silver. Also, if you guys like all things Nintendo and gaming, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We come out with new videos twice a week and the only way to stay on top of everything is to subscribe and hit the bell. So you are always aware whenever we release new videos. And with that said, thank you guys so very, very much. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And as always, keep on gaming.